Hello and welcome to Symphony Storytime. I'm Matthew Gailey and I'll be your reader today. We also have a very special guest from the Oregon Symphony joining us. Hi, my name is Jeff Garza and I play the French horn and it sounds like this. Thanks, Jeff. That was lovely. I can't wait to hear how it sounds with the story today. Speaking of, the story for today is this wonderful book called All Around Us. It's by Zelina Gonzalez, and it was illustrated by Adriana M. Garcia. It's about circles in life and relationships and nature, and we hope you really enjoy it. Grandpa says circles are all around us. We just have to look for them. He points to the rainbow that rises high in the sky after a thundercloud has come. He traces the colorful arc with his hand and says, Can you see? That's only half the circle. The rest of it is down below in the earth where water and light feed new life. That's the part we cannot see, but in my mind, I try. Grandpa and I work side by side in the garden, planting flowers and pulling vegetables. We eat what we've grown, crunchy lettuce, sweet carrots, and spicy chilies. Grandpa saves the stems and leaves and seeds to bury back in the ground. Here is another circle, he says. What we take from the earth, we return. He draws a big circle on his belly with his hand and a little circle on mine and says, we even have circles inside. This makes me laugh. Grandpa and I take a walk around our neighborhood where we find other circles, the sun, the clock, the bicycle wheels. We stare at the green and brown rings in each other's eyes for a long time. And then we laugh again. He's right. Circles are everywhere. I'll show you one more important circle before the big round moon comes out, says Grandpa. We walk way back in our yard and sit under a tall pecan tree. Grandpa seems sad when he sits here because this is where we bury the ashes of our ancestors. I don't remember them, but he does. Even our bodies return to the earth, he says, and pats the ground with his big hands. But that's only half of the circle. 
That's the part we cannot see. Finally, we walk to the front yard to water our smallest tree. Grandpa planted it for me on the day I was born, and everything that fed me while I grew in my mother's belly is buried at the roots. I love bringing water to the apple tree that is already taller than I am. Grandpa pats my head and says, Do you see, my grandchild? We have new life with you. I am part of the circle, too. The part we can see, just like a rainbow. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. That was wonderful. And I love how the musical selection fits so well with this book. Well, thank you so much. That's my time. And Jeff, before I go, I couldn't help but notice that there's all kinds of circles in your horn. That's right. Uh, the horn is an instrument where everything has to be curled up and put in a tight spot because otherwise it would be stretched out in one long pipe and it would be 12 feet long. So it's not the easiest thing to carry around unless you put it all in one bunch like this. Wow. You know what else is 12 feet long? I think I know what you're thinking. A great white shark. Thanks, everyone. Uh, Jeff is going to leave us with a musical selection. So uh, the piece I'm going to play, I'll play a little section of it, is called Horned Lock, and the composer is Sigurd Berga, and that is a Norwegian composer. And Horned Lock translates into horn signal or horn call because the horn, its origins before it became a, a musical instrument that was played in orchestras and in uh, chamber music, it was, a music, it was an instrument that was used outdoors to signal across wide spaces so that you could communicate something to somebody on the other end of a valley or the other end of a, a lake and tell them bad weather is approaching or there's danger on the way or you know, the harvest is, is good over here. You know, and something to, it was like a telephone, an ancient telephone. So this piece is, is showing the roots of the instrument. So if you can imagine you're hearing this from a, a distance across a wide valley uh, or lake and, and somebody is trying to tell you something with this instrument. <laughs> 